That's Dash. And that's done. And we're rolling bones. Today we are going to give a tutorial on how to play Gaslands. Obviously it's not going to be enough to do to, to play your own game. You'll still need the book. Um, but it's a start and gives you an opportunity to find out if it's what you want to do. Yep. If it's a game you like. Yep. So we'll touch on a few of the rules and show how a game can play out with one car each. Gaslands is a game of rounds and each round is divided into a gear phase. Each gear phase only certain cars can activate. So your cars have a uh, max gear there and that's the the highest gear they can go to and they can shift up and down gears as they go but in that gear phase only the cars in the specific gear phase or that are in that gear or higher can activate in that round yeah the faster you go the harder it is to control your vehicle so keep that in mind uh, sometimes being the fastest car on the road is not the best thing you will want something to track the gear or the phase that you're in. I like to, uh, any dice works, anything like that. I like to use that big dice. As Dash mentioned, you need to be uh, at a certain gear or higher in order to activate during that gear phase. And that is how you qualify for activation. And when it becomes your turn, if you have a car to activate, you must activate. So every round, there will be one player selected to have the pole position, and the person with pole position always activates first. The different scenarios in the game determine how the pole position changes players, but it does change players every, every round. When it's your turn to activate, you have different steps that you take to activate. So first is your movement step, then you have the attack step, and then at the end of each activation there is a wipeout uh, step. The movement step is very detailed and this is where most of the action from my experience happens in the game. And uh, so what the first thing you want to do is you're going to select a movement template. After you've selected your movement template you're going to place it in front of your vehicle and you just do it by butting the front of your vehicle up against the template and moving along the track. Just like it's a train almost. Next thing you do is you're gonna find the handling on your card. And here's the handling on this card. You can see that it is three. So you're gonna take three dice. Depending on what you roll, you'll have different results and you can use that to your advantage and often disadvantage as well. So that is the roll skid die step. Then you want to Spend your shift results. So shift is one of the most useful results on the die because it allows you to do various things. You can, with the shift result, discard a hazard or slide spin result. So uh, those are both uh, results on the dice. The next thing you can do with this uh, shift result is change your gear up or down by one. That will gain you a hazard token when you do that. You can then, with the shift result, discard a hazard token as well. So there are ways to control the amount of hazard tokens you get. With the shift results, you can also discard the shift result without effect. It's the only one that you can ignore. Everything else you have to resolve. After you've spent your shift results, which once you learn this process, it's actually not as complicated as this sounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you'll gain your hazard tokens from the uncancelled hazard slide spin results. Then you're going to place your slide template uh, if you've rolled the slide result. So then you will move the vehicle into its final position based upon what you've rolled. So if you place the slide result, you're going to place your car against the slide template as it fits against your movement template. If there is no slide, then you're going to place your car at the end of the template as it is intended. The one, the, there is a collision window that opens up at that point, and if your movement template crosses over an obstruction or another vehicle, then you have to, you're, you're interrupted and you resolve that collision. And then the final step of the movement step is you will then resolve the spin, if you have a spin result. Then you have the shooting step, and each gun has a different different range 
The short range is just the short template. Medium range is just the medium template. The long range is just the long template. Who knew? Yeah. Then the double range is the medium and the long put together. Another shooting template is the large template and then the small template. And each one of these has their own rules in the, the game. Uh, another thing to be aware of, whenever you choose a weapon, you have to choose a facing, front, side, or rear. Um, this is when you generally when you create your vehicle. When you create your car, yes. Uh, there are upgrades to that. You can give them turrets and things like that. Also, everyone in your car has a handgun, which is 360. Um, so you can, you can do that any direction. Um, and we will go over showing how that works in a later step. The weapons also have an, an attack stat, which tells you how many dice to roll to hit. During the attack step, uh, follow the sequence, declare the targets, and check range. You roll the attack dice, and every four plus is a hit, and a six is a critical hit, so it equals two hits. Then there can be a collision window, again, based on what happens with the weapon. And then the uh, player tries to evade with a, or the person being shot at tries to evade, and they need a six plus for each hit that they, or for each hit you have on them, they need to get a six or better. Then the last part is you take your whole points. Those boxes, those boxes there, those are your whole points, and you just tick one of those off each time you get hit. All right, when you're finished with the attack step, you go into the wipeout step. Any vehicle with six or more hazard tokens during the wipeout step then suffers a flip check. The flip check is pretty easy. You look at what gear you're in and you roll a six-sided die. And if the result is your gear or higher, you do not flip. If it is lower than your gear, then you do flip. So the slower you go, the better off you are in this instance. Uh, so if you do fail your flip check, you're going to place the medium straight and you're going to move your vehicle along that and you could have yet another collision at this point. Then you're going to reset your current gear. So if you're in gear five, all the way at the top of most of the normal cars, uh, then you're going to go down to gear one. Uh, and then finally, you're going to lose control. So your player that is to the clockwise direction from you, uh, they will get to then pivot your car and place it how they want. And yet another collision, collision could happen at this point. Some quick things that we wanted to touch on are some, some tokens, depending on the gear, give you a hazard token, the touch it, you use it rule, um, reversing. If you're in gear one, you can reverse and you can use any any template in that's permitted in gear one and go backwards. Mm -hmm. Some things that are forced moves, like the flip that's a forced move, so you can't control that. You just have to do that. You don't roll skid dice or anything like that for forced moves. Um, and then uh, trivial maneuvers are the ones that give you a shift token for them. And... Uh, push it is if you don't like your results you can take an automatic hazard token and re-roll any of the results on your skid dice. There are some additional attack rules to remember as well. One is distracted if your vehicle is in contact with an obstruction uh, at the start of your attack step then you are unable to target any other uh, vehicles for a weapon attack. The next is cover. So if you target another vehicle and then you place your template down and that template crosses an obstruction, then you're gonna have a minus one to hit. Uh, and that minus one does not affect criticals, which is the next rule I would like to talk about. And with a critical hit, any six counts as two hits. Uh, and the criticals remain on a six, even though you have the minus one from any potential cover. When you remove your last hold point, you become wrecked. When you're wrecked, 
you do the following thing. You skid to a halt, so your a forced move is short straight forward, and you open a collision window when you do that, so you could hit people and, and cause more damage. Um, you reset, you reduce your current gear to one, and discard all hazard tokens from the vehicle. You make an explosion check and roll a d6 plus any ammo tokens uh, and you explode on a 6 plus. So if you have three ammo tokens and you roll a three, you explode. Um, and then when you're wrecked, you turn the model over and leave it in play. If a vehicle gets wrecked during a collision, um, it becomes twisted metal and is removed from play after resolving the wrecking process. If you start in contact with an obstruction, then you ignore that obstruction and just move through it. You've had a collision, now you need to resolve it. First thing you, you're gonna do is determine the orientation, and you, your orientations are head-on, T-bone, and tailgate. Then the active vehicle declares the reaction. One is to evade, and the other is to smash back. The passive vehicle or obstacle declares its reaction. Obstacles always smash back. Uh, then you're going to roll any smash attacks, roll any evades as a response. Then you're going to apply any uncancelled hits and gain hazard tokens as appropriate. To calculate the dice that you have for the attack, it depends on whether it's a head-on, T-bone, or tailgate. On a he head-on, you add the, the current gears of each vehicle. And again, the attack dice work the same way. Four and up is the number you're looking for to do hits. <laughs> um, on a T-bone, you use your own gear. And on a tailgate, you use uh, your gear, uh, well, the person behind's gear minus the person in front's gear. And then the weight difference uh, of the vehicles changes that. Yep, so if the vehicle, uh, if one of the vehicles involved has one class heavier, then that will, vehicle will have plus two attack dice. If it's two classes heavier, you get plus four attack dice. On the flip side, if you're one class lighter, you get minus one attack dice, and two classes lighter, minus two attack dice. So, same way, you resolve the smash attacks by rolling the attack dice, and then you uh, roll your evade dice, which should be your same, your current gear. Mm -hmm. um, so you roll your current gear to evade, if you declared an evade. If you didn't declare an evade, then you can't evade. Yep. You roll your smash. Yep. Then you're going to apply the uncancelled hits and uh, do any damage yep. at that point. During that, you, uh, everybody involved in the collision gets two hazard tokens. Uh, unless you both evade, then you each get one hazard token. Mm -hmm. If you're like me and you're just watching this video for the first time, a lot of this may not make sense. I highly recommend if you're interested in playing this game, find a copy of the book and read through with the video here. It'll help you a ton. Uh, the video is really meant to touch on some of the basic rules and uh, you're not going to get a full overview of how to play this game without the book and yeah. templates. You, you will need tools to play this game. One of the things I like to do when I'm learning a new game, I will usually read through the rules, then watch a video about it, and then read back through the rules. Mm -hmm. um, and then play a game, and then maybe read the rules again. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, I'm a yeah. slow learner. <laughs> Next, we are going to just run through a little scenario. We're just going to do a little race between two regular cars. We are going to roll now for pole position. I got a two, Jesse got a four. So he has the pole position so he can place his car anywhere touching the starting line. The second, the next player puts it anywhere on the starting line not touching another vehicle. And I'm going to put mine right here. Done goes first and he will select a removal template. So I will choose the medium and I will place it there. And 
So I get to now roll my handling. This is a trivial maneuver because I am in gear one. You don't have to roll your handling. I'd like to. You don't have to actually. I'll just, I'll just move. And then are you gonna shift up or? Yeah, I'll shift up. Okay. So that, I will do that first, shift up. will give me a hazard token and then I get to move to the end of my template here and that includes my movement now my arc firing arc on my gun is in my front arc so I don't get to shoot anything then it is my turn and I am going to Choose a movement template. Dang it. And there you see why uh, having a, not being able to measure first and not having an idea of stuff puts you, uh, makes a difference. I was planning on hitting dumb, mm -hmm. but I will not. I am not going to roll any dice as well, and I am going to Shift up a gear. Gain my hazard token. And then move there. My uh, guns are front and rear mounted, so uh, facing, so I can't shoot at them either. We did skip the wipeout step and the collision step because no one has enough stuff to do that. Yep. Gear two. Yep. Person in pole position activates first. I do have a vehicle in gear two. So I now need to move to my movement step and I need to choose a template. And I want the veer template. So veer is legal. That's gear two which is a trivial maneuver. And this time I think I do want to roll my dice. I don't know if that's an option or not. Hold on a second. It's always an option. Always an option. Well, this time I do want to roll my dice, so I've got a handling of three. I automatically get a shift because I am doing a trivial maneuver. And I rolled a shift, a spin, and a hazard. Well, if I take the results, I will get at least two hazards. I'll take the spin. I have two shifts left. I'm going to cancel the, the hazard with that shift. And I will then spend one of my shift, my remaining shift, to go up a gear. That will give me two hazard tokens. So I'm now up to a total of three. Now I move my vehicle, I go to there, and I can now pivot, because of my spin, I can now pivot my vehicle up to 90 degrees, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to aim it just a little bit towards that gate. Then it is my turn. I am going to use a turn template. And I am going to roll my shift dice. So, shift, shift, spin. I do, it's not trivial, so I don't get a shift in this. From uh, the maneuver. From the maneuver. So I have, right now I have one shift and two spins. And I am going to push it and gain a hazard to reroll these two dice. I am going to shift up one gear, the one shift. I am going to cancel the hazard that I picked up with the other shift. So I will gain two hazards, one for shifting up and one for the spin. Yep.
now I am in my shooting phase, my attack step, and I am going to declare done as my target with my attack. So the range on the heavy machine gun is double. It's front mounted. So that means you, you have to put it, it has to be on your front section and can go like this. Okay. Any, as long as part of it is in your front section, touching the front of your car, you can do that, but it has to go straight ahead. Okay. So uh, definitely within range. Heavy machine gun, which is 3d6. So, fours or better will cause hits. I hit twice. Um, now, done needs to evade. Based on my gear, so I get three dice. And he needs uh, sixes. sixes to evade. I evaded nothing. So he will take three damage. So I have a total of 12 because I put extra armor on my vehicle. And I will check off three of them. Gear three. Yep. And I'm in pole position. I have a vehicle in gear three. I will use the medium template. Take the medium template, it's a trivial, place it there, and I will roll my dice for this one. So I got a shift, a spin, and a hazard. And you get one shift from the thing. Yep, so I'm going to take a hazard and re-roll these two dice. And I got wow. two more shifts, that's exactly what I was looking for. So I've got... Uh, a shift that I will spend, so I'm going to take this shift off and go up to gear four on my die there. And keep in mind, I have a max gear five, I can only go up gear one more time. Then, with these shifts, I'm going to cancel the uh, hazard I got from shifting up, and this shift I will spend to cancel the hazard I got from re rolling from pushing it. And then my shift I got from my trivial maneuver, I will use to remove a hazard token from my vehicle card. Then I get to move my car to its final position, and that's it. Okay, for my turn, I am in turn, I'm in three, gear three. I am going to choose a gentle. That is perfect positioning. Then I am going to roll my three shift dice. <laughs> I will push it. Uh, I'm going to cancel the slide with this one because that's terrible. I am going to... I don't think there's any way I can beat done right now. But... Uh, so I'm going to shift up. And I will take two hazards. And I'm gonna fire my machine gun at done again, which is long and will definitely hit him. Mm -hmm. So, 3d6, looking for fours. Two hits. Two hits. So I get four dice, because I'm in gear four. I will attempt to evade. I do not evade any. And I will take two more damage, right? Yep. Okay. And now we are in gear four. Gear four. 
All right, I'm gonna take it nice and easy. I'll take the medium template again. Place it right there. Oh, I wanna move the terrain. So in gear four, it's still a trivial. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna cross the finish line and I don't need to roll dice, so I am just gonna use that shift to remove a, a hazard token from my vehicle and then cross the finish line. Well, there you have a quick, simple race. Uh, too simple. You get to see done when. Uh, we just wanted to have a short, quick example without a lot of complications and a lot of uh, fluff in there. Normally you ha will have multiple cars per team, which do make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, also a track makes a difference, m having to make multiple turns. Yeah. You can see that all I did was make a swerve and then I spun my car from a die roll and, and that's all I did to really reposition my car. Otherwise I was going straight lines. Yeah, in a, in a race this, this short as well, Pole position does make a huge difference because yeah, you get to shoot. You it got did. to shoot that gap where me, mm -hmm. I would have had to. Well, you had to make the turn. I, I mean, even a straight shot, I wouldn't have gone through that thing. And I, I, my best thing would have been to try and hit you. But uh, anyway, just wanted to make it real quick and simple. Mm -hmm. There are a, there is a lot more to the game than this. Um, there are sponsors that give you perks and give you mm -hmm. abilities to access to special weapons and things like that. Um, there are a huge amount of cars in the game that cars have different abilities. Like uh, Dunn and I were just talking about, uh, one of his favorites is the uh, performance car that has a slip away maneuver. When you're getting targeted, you can you can activate and move just there's, in that. There's an example of one. Love, um, love the high performance vehicle. Yeah. Uh, another example of a car that has an ability is a buggy, and when it rolls, it skips the two damage from the wipeout, or from the roll when, when it flips. Um, monster trucks have abilities. Um, there's, I mean, a ton of stuff in here. So, that was just a quick game, show you the basic mechanics. We're going to do some real races, right? Yeah, absolutely. So like, like, make some teams, do some stuff. Absolutely. I don't know if we'll do a whole campaign, but we'll do some races yeah. and stuff. We've got a lot Lots going on going right on. now. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if there's any questions or comments, put them, put them down below and we will respond to those. And thanks for tuning in. Yep, thanks for watching.